At Computex a couple weeks ago, Fractal Design introduced the all-new Terra ITX. And now, every other small form factor case is just dead to me. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. If you're a fan of small form factor PCs, you're going to want to pay attention to this one. This is the all-new Fracta Design Terra, a mini ITX case with a volume of just 10.4 liters, but almost none of the difficulties that come with building a system that small. First up, thanks to Fracta Design for sending out this case for my review. As always on the channel, no money changed hands. Fracta Design has no input over the context of this video, nor will they see it before you do. With the disclosures out of the way, let's get right into it. I am absolutely enamored with the Terra. From the jade and walnut color of my particular unit, to the internal layout, and rounding everything off with phenomenal material and build quality, there's pretty much nothing I don't like about it. Walking around the case, the front panel is very elegant with that walnut slab accent on the bottom, housing a power button along with each a single USB-A and USB Type-C port. There's no hard drive activity light, reset switch, front audio jacks, or even a power LED here, so those looking for a massive amount of front connectivity options might be a bit disappointed. But like all things in life, you have to take the good with the bad. Since there are fewer buttons and lights, that also means there's fewer cables running from the front panel, vastly cutting down on cable clutter inside of this case. The front panel itself is an 8mm thick piece of anodized aluminum, if that helps give some context to how premium and sturdy the Terra feels. The tops and sides are made from 1.8mm aluminum panels, all toollessly attached around the inner steel frame. In fact, the only ITX case that I've ever handled that was even more rigid is Heavy Metal, my 3 8 inch steel plate custom chassis that I built last year. Like I said, the majority of this case is completely toolless, with the top panel and both side panels simply popping off and sliding right out, with the help of some spring-loaded latches. With that removed, you have full access to every single cubic inch inside this case. The power supply has a bracket held in with just a pair of screws, and then we get to the Terra's party trick that keeps it so compact, its adjustable internal frame. Traditional small form factor cases often make GPU installation a pain, and that's if your case will even fit the GPU that you want. Well, the center frame on the Terra is actually slidable from left to right, allowing you to decide if you want more space for your CPU cooler or for a multi-slot GPU. I currently have the case set up for a two-slot GPU, giving me a full 77 millimeters of clearance for a CPU cooler. My current build is running a Jingsha X99 Mini ITX motherboard paired with a Xeon E5 2687WV4 12-core CPU, along with 64 gigabytes of registered ECC DDR4 memory. CPU cooler options are very lacking for this board, as it requires narrow ILM mounting patterns, traditionally only used in rack mount servers designed primarily for passive coolers. I managed to find this Dynatron R24 for just $40 on Amazon, which features four direct contact heat pipes and a 60mm fan mount. Rather than running the included blowy Matron, I opted to do a Noctua 60x25mm fan swap. This will definitely hurt the max performance of this CPU cooler, which is rated at 180 watts of dissipation, but should still be plenty for the 2687WV4, which maxes out at just 160 watts anyway. If I'd chosen a standard consumer motherboard instead, not only would this build be a bit boring to put on this channel, but we'd have quite a bit more cooler options to choose from, like the ID Cooling IS30, which itself is only about 30 millimeters tall, and shorter than even the rear I.O. panel. That configuration would allow our GPU as much space as possible. On the GPU, in total, you have about 145 millimeters of total height, along with 332 millimeters in length, but it's the girth of the graphics cards that might give you some pause. With the Terra configured for maximum GPU space, you could actually fit a full 72 millimeter thick graphics card in here, so even the latest triple slot plus cards should feel right at home, even if they are slightly claustrophobic. The Terra supports both SFX and SFXL power supplies, meaning configurations up to nearly 1100 watts are possible in this tiny little chassis, again letting you drive the most demanding hardware. Uh, 13900KF and RTX 4080 is certainly in the cards in this case, something that sounds absolutely ridiculous when you consider full towers that you typically see driving that much power. As far as other features inside the case, you can add a pair of 2.5 inch SSDs if you'd like, and that's about it. 
while the Fractal Design TARDIS, excuse me, Terra, is quite a bit bigger on the inside than you might expect, it's still bound by the laws of physics and only about the size of a shoebox. You're still building a small form factor PC, and there are still concessions to be made. While cable management is tight inside of this chassis, it's still definitely manageable, especially if you opt for NVMe-only storage, skipping the 2.5-inch drives entirely. One thing I haven't talked about so far is fan support, or mounts for radiators, and that's because there really aren't any, at least not if you want anything close to a full-length GPU. There's a single 120mm mount behind the power supply on the GPU side of the chassis, but installing either a fan or a radiator cuts your GPU length to a max of just 200mm. That excludes pretty much every modern GPU, as ITX cards are a bit of a rare beast these days. Not only that, but 120mm AIOs are also nearly impossible to find these days. And even if you manage to get a hold of one, you're just going to be dumping all the heat from your CPU directly into your power supply intake. In other words, I'd stick to air cooling if the Terra is in your shopping cart right now. This is still a 10.4 liter chassis, and while it is basically an open frame with ventilation aplenty, there's also not room for large or exotic CPU coolers or water cooling really of any kind. Storage expandability is limited to whatever NVMe slots you have on your motherboard, with the option of two SATA SSDs, though at the cost of more difficult cable management and a slight incursion to the space allocated for your GPU. But the Fractal Design Terra is a serious breath of fresh air in the world of small form factor PCs, at least outside of some of the niche cases which have only existed in small batch runs. In this realm of PC building, we have cases like the Cooler Master NR200, the Lian Li Q58, the Inwin A1+, Plus. all of them attempt to maintain the standards of high-end PC building, but crammed into as small of a space as possible. While they all support all-in-one liquid coolers or full-size tower heat sinks, they're also considerably larger than the Terra is. The front I.O. is basically non-existent. There's no room for massive fans or heat sinks, and storage and cable management space are both fairly limited. But when you strip back the idea of what you actually need to build a top-flight small form factor PC, I don't think there's a case around that manages to do this much in such a small space. The Fractal Design Terra is as elegant as it is tiny, and I could probably go on and on for another 10 or 15 minutes on how much I really do like this case, but I think I'd rather just direct you down to the video description where you can order one for yourself. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. And on your way to pick yourself up a Fractal Terra, why don't you swing into craftcomputing.store, grab yourself a custom Craft Computing pint glass, or one of my brand new 3.5 inch floppy coasters. That's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Beer for today is a classic from Founders Brewing. It is the All Day IPA, a Session IPA. Now, the reason I chose this one today is actually to highlight a feature in the upcoming Craft Computing Pint Glass. That's right, these are finally being released. Uh, these are all laser etched here in my garage, but I did add one special feature, and I don't know if that's coming across too well on camera but all of them have laser etching on the bottom of the glass to promote nucleation sites for your beer to constantly refresh your head. So if you go back and watch this video again, number one, you'll help the uh, engagement. Number two, uh, watch the head on the beer and it shouldn't disappear over the course of this video. Pretty cool. So I've been filming for right around 20-ish minutes or so. Uh, while the head has definitely died down, the top of it still has this super, super dense, uh, tiny little bubbles uh, formed at the top. And the nucleation is still working. There's still a very steady stream of bubbles coming up right through the center. Uh, so the glass definitely works. Uh, this is a beer that normally after you pour it, it's, it's dead flat immediately. Uh, so even getting 20 minutes worth of head on a pint, that's pretty good.